There are five steps in the research process. It begins with defining the marketing problem, planning the research design, sampling, collecting and analyzing the data, and finally reporting and recommending on our findings. The first step is problem definition. This is split into two particular areas. The first one is market research problem. Here we're trying to determine what information is needed and how that information can be obtained efficiently and effectively. The second part is a market research objective. The specific information needed to solve a market research problem. The objective should be to provide insightful decision-making information and to get us going on our market research journey. The second step, research design. In step two in research design, we specify which research questions must be answered, how, as well as when the data will be gathered, how will the data be analyzed? Now remember the difference between data and information. Data is raw, information is once the raw data has been processed. There are two areas from which we can get data, primary data and secondary data. In terms of primary data, this is data we collect for the first time. It can be used for solving the particular problem under investigation. Big advantage of primary data, it's fresh in the sense we are finding out about stuff that's happening right now. The disadvantage is it can be expensive and time consuming. Secondary data, data previously collected for any purpose other than the one at hand. Meaning if we go online, we look at newspapers, the data that we find there, it's old, it's not 100% exactly what we need it for, but the advantage is it is quick. Step three, sampling. So universe is the population from which the sample will be drawn. Sample is a subset of the population. 
And there's a few different options we have here. Probability sampling, random sampling, non-probability sampling, and convenience sampling. At the end of the day, we choose a sample rather than the entire population from a research perspective, because it would just be way, way, way too expensive, as well as time consuming, to interview or survey every single customer that we have, or even the entire population of a given area. Step four, collecting and analyzing data. Most primary data is collected by market research field service firms or organizations. These are companies that specialize in interviewing respondents on a subcontracting basis. And they focus on things like focus group facilities, mall intercept locations, and test product storage. So what this basically means is, imagine as a business, we decide that let's get a professional organization to come in and do the market research for us. We may give them the problem that we're trying to solve, and then they will come up with pretty much everything else. And in terms of collecting primary data, they may look at conducting interviews, observations, surveys, looking at usage data from our internal systems, and also conducting focus groups. Each of these activities is time consuming. However, the idea is to try and get a good understanding of the customers as well as the market by collecting data from several different sources. Now that we've collected all the data, it's time to analyze. And the process of analysis or processing the data is what leads to getting information. One of the methods of analyzing data is cross tabulation. This is a method of analyzing data that lets the analyst look at the response to one question in relation to the response to one or more questions asked in the survey. The idea is we're trying to figure out are there certain relationships in the data that we can see and thereby work out particular patterns. For example, we may have asked several questions about what people buy and when they buy it. And here, by analyzing the data, we can see perhaps certain weather patterns, times of the year, or even events that are happening in the community or society affects sales of particular items. For example, when summer comes along, there is a positive correlation between the amount of ice cream sold or the amount of sunscreen bought.
It's also quite interesting the profound impact of the internet on market research. Most marketing research companies are investigating gamification and biometrics. Gamification incorporates game mechanics to promote user engagement. For example, quite a few video games that were available on Facebook back in the old days used aspects of gamification to get a lot of data from users. Now this really is in the gray area of conducting market research. However, if you let the users know prior to collecting their data that you're going to be A, collecting their data, and B, what it's going to be used for, and also ensuring that you have consent to gather and use this data, then it's actually a rather interesting way of collecting a lot of data. In terms of biometric measurements, here we're looking at the human characteristics. So imagine you have a Fitbit, or maybe an Apple Watch, or a Samsung Watch, or just your phone that tracks and monitors your daily activity. Now, if you haven't thought about this one before, what all of these devices are doing is measuring your human characteristics i.e. how often do you exercise? Do you often go for a run or a jog? Or even how much you sleep on a daily basis? Now the internet as well as mobile technology has really changed the way that we as marketers can now collect data. fifth step is all about recommending and reporting on our findings. At the end of the day, we've done a lot of the hard work in terms of gathering data, analyzing data, and now it's all about sharing our actual findings. So what is it that we discovered? Did we solve a problem? Did we identify a gap in the market? Or have we potentially identified something that is going to take our business and our organization to the next level?